Well, it's less than a fortnight since the decision to rest Thierry Henry at Old Trafford backfired, but Arsenal are holding their captain in reserve again today with Robin Van Persie and Emmanuel Adebayor forming the forward line. No Kleb, Jungberg or Bergkamp in the 16, so five changes in all to the team that beat Villarreal. Johan Juru and Abu Diaby among those coming in, along with Adebayor, they're new to this derby, and it's the first one Arsenal have gone into without an Englishman in the team. Tottenham are without Jermaine Genus, rested as a precaution because of a shin injury, so Edgar Davids will move into the middle of midfield alongside one-time Arsenal transfer target Michael Carrick. And Timu Tenio is back after missing the defeat by Manchester United with a hamstring injury. The absence of Ledley King, who scored in the home derby, leaves a big void, but Anthony Gardner returns from injury to make his 100th Premiership appearance. Well, Spurs have never, ever been in the Champions League. They got to the semi-finals of the European Champions Cup in the early 60s. But even that might be eclipsed by Arsenal if they can claim their first ever victory in that competition this season. But today is all about finishing fourth and making sure they're in that competition next year. And Spurs will feel they've come too far now to let it go easily here. But it's going to be a difficult afternoon for them. Arsenal sensing the opportunity to overtake them. And a little change in Tottenham's lineup at the beginning. We thought that Edgar Davids would move in, field one from the left side, but he's not. He started left, and Tainio has started in field alongside Michael Carrick. That's one little change from what we were led to believe. Here's Lee. And that's cut out by Toure. This is Johan Juru. intense as ever for a derby but a really meaningful one at that that's send Ross with a clearance to Michael Carrick who's looking to play in Jermaine Defoe who gets there ahead of Philip Senderos cleared by Flamini crucially won by Dawson now Tenio there's a decent ball to Lennon going to be a good little area to keep your eye on. Aaron Lennon with his pace against Flamini has done wonderfully well playing at left back for Arsenal these last couple of months. And I think the top two have got a big important part if they can get Keenan Defoe involved. And I think Senderos and Tori are less happy against people who have got quick feet and got good movement. Senderos. Now Keane. Put it back by Tanio, and it's Senderos who clears. Reyes, though, found himself under pressure, which forced the error. Keane. Here's Carrick. Now Stalteri. Gardner. Now Davids. Spurs here starting to find their rhythm. Lee trying to take on Juru, getting his cross away. And they say from Tanio's header made by Lehman. Yeah, probably his weak side coming from there. Not an easy header. Maybe just a fraction behind him, but it's a decent little run from Lee. Didn't waste any time putting the ball there and you know, backing away from goal made the header difficult. better from Tottenham, moved the ball well from right to left, worked the opening well. And by all. And they got the wrong side of uh, Gardner who, in his attempts to get back, fouled him. I'll make a note of that. 13 minutes in, the first free kick in a local derby. <laughs> Highly unusual. But he does, he just makes a mistake doesn't get his judgment right, Anthony Gardner, he's prone to that at times, I think. Struggling to get back. Well, 
Well, Van Persie is over the kick. Toure, the goal-scoring hero from the other night, has stayed back. Van Persie whips it across. And Roberto just a flick, but couldn't quite get enough on it. Decent movement here from Arsenal. They are a big side, and they will be a threat from this sort of situation. Again, this is not easy. He's got to arch his back and try and redirect it. Half a chance. Stalteri. Here's Defoe. Now Tania. on it for young Pio Lee, who becomes well acquainted with one or two of the opposition fans. <laughs> Here's Carrick. Gardner. Now Stelteri. Gilberto. Here's Torre. Now Diaby. Perez. Van Percy. And the ball got the header back to Reyes. Through the legs of Stalteri, who's desperate to try and claw his way back into it, but it's a corner. Nearly, very, very nearly through. Oh, Van Persie turned on the style, good persistence as well from Reyes to win this kick. An area from where Arsenal have already proved they could cause problems. Here he comes! And it went right the way through. So many in there, Arsenal. No one down the line of the ball. And it's a decent ball in. Eight yards out or whatever. No one really going in after it. Disappointing for Arsenal, that. Lee. There's Carrick. Stalteri. This is Dawson. And then linking up well with Keane. As Roberto won it initially, but Keane's got it back. It's Aaron Lennon. He's given Sendros the slip. Ends up now to be one or the other. Lovely football from Tottenham. This is a quick feet and movement we talked about. It really is very, very good football between Keane and, and Lennon here. And he just skins Flamini on the edge of the box. To be fair, his pace is just lefty. His teammates behind, they're really trying to get in there. I think he takes the shot on. No real threat to Lehman in the end. It's Keane. Now Lennon, he's got away from Sendros. Defoe, can he turn? No, he should have turned the slid. Edgar Davids, this is a really poor finish. I know what he's trying to do. You just want to see him put his foot through this, but yet again, the pace of Lennon is troubling him at the back. Just turn and play Davids in. Look at him. Acres of space for him. And a really poor finish in the end for Jermaine Defoe. Show great faith in his own ability then, Defoe, mm. but uh, yeah, no. maybe the vision that was required. No, there's nothing wrong with that. You're on the 18-yard line taking the chance on. 
He'll be disappointed at the execution of it. There's Lennon. He really has been a thorn in Arsenal's side so far. Tenio. Now Robbie Keane, who's wandered all over the park. Carrick. Now Defoe could be in. Great control. Good stop. Again, he couldn't get the elevation to beat Lehman, and the goalkeeper beat it away. I'll tell you, I don't think he knows an awful lot about this, James Lehman. Does it hit him in the face? It certainly looks like it. This is a super ball in. Absolutely beautiful. And this time he does do. You feel he probably learned from his last chance and there was nothing in his mind but putting his foot through this. And he's so unlucky. Lehman just stayed big. And he got lucky, the goalkeeper. This is a really good spell for Tottenham. Mounting the attempts. And four of them have worked the goalkeeper. Thirteen years since they won here in the first season of the Premiership. But Spurs doing themselves justice. And Carrick has swept a quick free kick out to Lee. Again, they have Arsenal stretched. Here's Lennon. Now Keane. And they're working overtime at the back here. And what I said earlier, Keane, the skill, the trickery of him, pace of Lennon, and the same with Defoe. He's really troubling Arsenal at the back. Now Keane was held off then by Senderos, but. They're looking busy, they're looking lively in the final third here, Tottenham. Yeah, that's the challenge. Davis is not making any attempt to play the ball. As soon as it's a ways, he's just taking Perez down. But they're upset because a little earlier they feel that this was a free kick in their favour. I'm not so sure it is. It goes across Keane, but... Not a lot there. That would have been hugely generous. Oh, no surprise at the booking. Steve Bennett's booked more and sent more players off this season than any other official. So at least the players knew beforehand what might happen. And it's the end of season amnesty wasn't in place. Edgar Davids would be looking at a suspension now, but uh, he's already served one, which forced him to miss the home game with Arsenal. today in the evidence of the first half an hour of this match. Arsenal will look a little flat to me. And it's cross. Here's Reyes. Through the middle to Van Persie! And he got his shot away. Brilliant. It's the element of surprise that would have beat the goalkeeper. Because he just took it and won and then hit it. Two touches happened so quickly. Spark from Arsenal. The Tottenham's early exit from both domestic cup competitions has at least allowed them to focus on this pursuit of a Champions League place for the majority of this season. Well, this is a lovely chance, and it's his feet, his ability to control and hit it almost in one. There's a touch, there's a hit. As quick as you like, it's a beautiful ball fed through. One and hit, one step and hit. And either side of Robinson would have given him a problem. And Percy, one of the fresh pair of legs thrown in by Arsene Wenger. Try and uh, guard against the knock on effect of that training encounter with Villarreal in the week. I hope so far, on all four matches where a home Champions League tie has been followed by a home match in the Premiership. I wonder if he's made as many changes as this though. Here's Davids. Shirley winning the tackle. 
Fury, the one change to what has become over the last couple of months, the recognised back four. Here's Davids. You just wonder if Spurs' biggest problem in this game will be do they believe enough in themselves? Do they believe in their ability to go and win the game? Because they must have arrived here thinking a point would be a brilliant result and keeps Arsenal four behind us and our destiny in our own hands. But as this game's going on, you just wonder is someone going to take a chance? Is someone going to gamble by making a run, by going ahead of the ball? And maybe they might not. in past Tenio and Tenio gets the shot in well, three now from Tenio two headers and a, and a shot neither of them good, good enough and the Spurs have to keep believing a victory here would all but seal that uh, fourth place Mathematically, it would uh, leave them needing just one more win from their remaining couple. Against Bolton and against West Ham. And Arsenal have got a, an overcrowded final week to the season with uh, three matches to complete. There's Gilberto. Torre, now Perez, told to get up by Steve Bennett. Here's Lee. Down the line by Stalteri, looking for the danger man, Lennon. Defoe, advantage played as it ran to Robbie Keane. They're short of options in the middle, only David's in there now, Shouldn't and he ends offside. Shouldn't be, he's looking right along the line, he knows he's quicker than Flamini. Oh, this is so frustrating for the Tottenham bench, it must be not a lot in it, but he goes too early. Doesn't need to go that early when you're as quick as he is. And Lennon, who likes Cesc Fabregas, is one of the nominations for the PFA Young Player of the Year. By all, here's Van Persie. Reyes with a cross, out of by all the leap, but Gardner had leapt ahead of him. Good header. Well, it's taken a long, long time for this crowd to find their voices. 43 minutes. This is the first real spell of any pressure that Arsenal have had. Arsenal finally in this first half finding some momentum. Perez looking to make room for the cross. Johan Juru, here's Gilberto. It's against his own man, Adebayor. And now Spurs can break, Davids is ahead of Defoe. We have Reyes for company. He did all right in the end, I thought he'd just got himself into a little problem there. He managed to win the free kick. Gardner. Dawson. Here's Stolteri. Now the phone. Davids. This is Carrick. 
Oh, he's weaved a brilliant way through Michael Carrick! And ends it by lashing it into the side netting. Well, we might just have closed the book on goal of the season, right there and then. I talked about someone gambling, someone being adventurous for Spurs, someone getting ahead of the ball. But also, this is just a wonderful run. It gets a bit square, Colo Torre. He might have played it then, maybe he should have done. But he's got enough ability to have controlled this with his left foot. It's a wonderful, adventurous run. Full of skill, full of confidence. And it's such a pity that he hasn't put a finish on it. Well, it would have been a more than fitting end to the half for Tottenham had Carrick been able to take it all the way. Well, you would be worried, because you don't know. Martin Yol doesn't know. He sees Fabregas and Henri sitting and waiting. He doesn't know what or how long he's prepared to give them, Arsene Wenger. But he cannot be happy with the way his team have played in the first 45 minutes of this match. Well, it has been a wonderful first half for Spurs, everything but the goal, really. We very nearly had a goal to save her from Michael Carrick. A wonderful weaving run before a shot that, in the end, was too tight from the angle and went into the side netting. But this, after Spurs had had the majority of the half, Tainio had on three occasions threatened the Arsenal goal, Defoe twice as well. Jens Lehmann has had to make some decent saves, but at half-time, it's Arsenal nil, Spurs nil. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Gard. I'm sorry, I, I've been here uh, three days and uh, the food is, is bad. The uh, gym is a, it's kind of a heavy scene. Uh, is, there a, is there a minimum security option? Okay, think about it. Take our three-day test drive and you'll know for sure that a Vauxhall's right for you. Contact your local Vauxhall retailer to book yours now. So, the plane's here, but how do you get to it? Chauffeur takes you from your door to the airport. You check in without leaving the vehicle. What's the flight between here and London? Seven hours, right? People want to sleep, put proper beds on board. You're looked after by the best people. You have drinks on board, but why not sit at a bar? You eat when you want. You get to the other side, another chauffeur takes you right where you're headed. You're gonna need a bigger plane. <laughs> ah, the relentless pace of change. Monday's breakthrough is Wednesday's commodity. So how do you stay ahead? You have to make innovation part of your culture. Because ready or not, change is heading your way. IBM. Innovation for flexibility. That'll be £2.47. Price applies for the consumption of the first three slices only. Each subsequent slice eaten will be 50 pence extra. Offer only available to new cheese customers. At Tiscally, we keep things simple. Tiscally Broadband is unlimited and 14 99 is all you'll pay every month. ...does not include any other dairy products that are shredded, cubed, sliced or diced. Crackers? Completely. For unlimited broadband for just 14 99 call Tiscally now on 0800 107 9000. So, Dermot, what's so special about Westland's new multi-purpose compost with John Innes? Well, now, it contains the unique West Plus formula. It's great for healthy roots, which means healthy flowers and foliage. And it helps to reduce the impact on the environment, too. Westland, making Britain's gardens healthier.
find him and close shut the jaws of oblivion. Is it in a garage? This car is way too beautiful to be in a garage. This car is a work of automotive art. Chevrolet Corvette. Particular sunrise. Number of seats. Two. I've got some important news. I'm pregnant. Can I call you back? Hello, can I get a quote in a people carrier? Free inside this Sunday's News of the World. Don't miss your official licensed 2006 FIFA World Cup sticker album and stickers. It's the ultimate 2006 FIFA World Cup collectible. Plus, for the next two weeks, there are even more free stickers inside every paper. Don't miss your free 2006 FIFA World Cup sticker album and stickers. Only inside Sunday's News of the World. Well, in the fight for fourth, it's Spurs who are ahead on points in the league and are ahead on points in this match. But the worry for Martignol is that for all the possession they've had, for all the chances that they've created, they haven't taken any of them. And there is the lurking menace of Henri and Fabregas on the Arsenal bench. But at what stage will Arsene Wenger choose to use his insurance policy? Here's Edgar Davids. I think that all depends on how well his team start the second half. If they start better, and you feel that they must, then they might just hold them back a little. But I think if they have 15 minutes of the same as the first half, then they might be on a little bit earlier than he would like. And now he'll give his original team choice the benefit of any doubt and hope that his half-time words can inspire them. Thierry Henry, who brings a captain's influence as well as his uh, playing role. Being sent out to warm up here, is he, with Fabregas? Maybe we will see them earlier than expected. Bobby Keane. Oh, just an awkward, that one. That was awkward. He landed just on that right knee. Just went underneath him. Can be dangerous out in the body weight, doesn't talk about it as well. Catching it and just comes in to block it. You watch the right. You watch with the left and right knee buckles under him like that. And he opens up the joints. Clearing, but only to Robbie Keane. And here's Lennon. Davids flew in. Oh, but that was better, better ball, better attack from Davids. Sunday really going in on the cross. And it's still Tottenham who have the edge. And Davids here taking on Juru. Cleared by Torre that time, but it'll come straight back at them. In by Carrick, it's too long for. Now Wenger's out again. Substitution about to be made. Well, it's not worth any unnecessary risks with Tuesday in mind. Arsene Wenger might be thinking about changes to win this game, but this is a change to preserve Senderos. And Emmanuel Abue will come on. Juru will pair up with Toure. Straight in for immediate treatment, yeah. Get started right away on it. But it's been no better from Arsenal at the beginning of the second half. Been second best again. Away. 
rather wayward and wasteful. But immediately he's made a difference. And this is what he'll do on this right-hand side. He'll get forward time and time again, and if Davids is not aware of it, then they will get two against one against Lee. It should be a better ball, and they've got Van Persie and Adebayor in there. Really wastes an opportunity, and they haven't had many. Headed back by Toure. Here's Ibue. Perez. Now Gilberto. Three to his left. Van Persie's one of them. And he gets his shot away. And it's past the RB. Well, that's the best chance, it's the best opportunity. Tenio, offside flag is up against Robbie Key. Must have been close, he thinks it was close. Must have just drifted. Definitely try to keep himself on side. You can see that it's close, but Flamini just about got it right. You know, halfway the change might help Arsenal. I mean, this is the chance, and it's he's hit his first touch is a bit heavy. This one here gets away from him a little, but he makes something happen. It's a decent touch from the goalkeeper in the end. But nobody really driving into the six-yard box to get a touch on that. I'm talking about that right-hand side. The buoy we know loves to get forward. Hasn't happened in the first half with the way they were set up. And if Davids drifts away from there, as he's done time and time again, it's going to give this young lad plenty of opportunity to get forward. And in tandem with Perez there. Here is Perez. Played behind Reyes. Spurs can counter with Keane. This is Lennon. Now Stolteri. A wasted cross. And Henri tracks it top, comes off. Which may be the sign that the skipper is about to join the action. And we've already seen one substitution. Let's get a word on that injury to Philip Sendros from Jeff Shreves. Rob, the Arsenal medical team haven't detected anything specific. They said, as Andy saw, he jarred his knee, so he's been taken off as a precaution. But at the moment, the extent of it is unknown. Thanks, Jeff. Well, that makes sense. If you're not sure, don't aggravate it. Don't give yourself a problem. And this is a sensible time too for the next change. Man, look a bit, isn't it? Around the hour mark, giving Thierry Henry enough time to make his mark on this last North London derby here at Highbury. Now well, I said to you, if Arsenal didn't start any better, I thought he'd get 15 minutes to improve the performance. And then, if it didn't improve, and it really hasn't, then he'd be on. Here's Perez. Still Terry back to Dawson. Tania. Key. Slipping in Lennon. No. I don't think Tottenham will have a better opportunity of beating Arsenal here at Highbury. This last one here. They waited a long time for it. But they must believe. I know Ongi's just about to come on, but they must believe that they've got a chance. 
Well, it's her fourth corner, but will it yield anything? No is the answer. Well, interesting who he takes off. Well, we want to talk to him enough. Oh, he's through! Van Persie! Messed up. Not offside. Time to run beautifully. What a chance. And he must just think, if he hits the target, he scores. He runs from deep. Ball shredded now, nowhere near offside. It's a wonderful running ball. It's not a difficult chance. And I don't think I'm being unfair here. He gets to it, he controls it. He should be able to control that over the goalkeeper. And straight over him and into the net. Wonderful opportunity and he's wasted it. Well, all eyes were on the imminent arrival of Thierry Henry. Had he been on at that moment, you'd have expected Arsenal to be ahead now. Glorious chance, which Robin van Persie's wasted. Here's Defoe. Now Davids. It's Lee's cross. And the hit by Lennon travels wide. Well, let's just say Tory knew what he was doing. He was tempted just to lift the leg out. And here he comes. And number one. Double change as well. Fabregas coming on as well. It really is time to send on the big guns. Van Persie makes way. It's given the crowd a huge lift, the sight of Thierry Henry coming on. There was good reason for putting him on the bench for just this type of moment. And Diaby is the other player to make way with Fabregas coming on. Well, I wasn't surprised Fabregas was rested. I thought for the first time this season on Wednesday, he looked a little tired to me. It really was a surprise when he wasn't in the lineup. Henry throwing himself straight into it. Is there a sense on the Arsenal bench that Tottenham may have blown themselves out? For all the efforts they've had in that first hour, they haven't made full capital of them. And now Arsenal is showing a new level of urgency, new level of seriousness. It's Reyes as Arsenal raise their game. It's Thierry Henry. And it's brought clear by Aaron Lennon. Still Terry. was the last thing that the Tottenham defenders wanted to see, the arrival mm. of the talismanic Henri, who scored four times in previous North London derbies. Including that uh, fantastic 60-yard dash from his own half in the previous oh. encounter here. Good goalkeeping. Aware of the situation there, good starting position. Carrick again looking to thread Keenan this time he is onside. He almost marries up with the run. Tenio. Tenio got into trouble with Davids, but it's cleared by Gilberto in the end. Gardner. Carrick. Stolteri. Now Flamini. Fabregas. This is Henri. Perez. 
Adoy. Fabregas couldn't find the gap between Tenio and Carrick. Oh, a different feel about Arsenal now. I think the three subs, I think the buoy as well has made a difference. Gilberto's ball looks to pick out Adebayor, and Dawson gets the header away. Having looked the most likely to score, Spurs know they're in a fight just to get a point now. Here's Tanio, and Davids looks to break here for Tottenham, and Robbie Keane's there! scores a vital goal for Spurs, a precious goal for Spurs. Well, there's problems here, Perez and Lehman are all after. Edgar Davids, there's all sorts going on. The goal will stand. I don't, I don't think Davids saw him there, I don't know, I might be wrong. But they clash together, both of them, Gilberto and Ibui. And I just wonder if, is David's aware of the situation? David's goes ahead to play here. Does he see what's happening? He's almost, I don't know. But he, Gilberto gets up. But the ball ends a smashing one. And Robbie Keane's a very happy boy, but Arsenal are furious. And the little touch there just might have been the crucial one. A little deflection that dropped into Keane's path. Look, we've been here before. Well, that's a heated discussion on the issue of sportsmanship. Davids did appear to look back just at the point that one of those players was getting up, and whether that convinced him to carry on. Well, Robbie Keane has his first ever goal at Highbury. Spurs now have a potential seven-point advantage in the uh, race for that fourth qualifying place for the Champions League. But it's a goal riddled with controversy. That's where this knocking out the play, not knocking out the play, it really does get you in all sorts of problems. Searching ball from Fabregas. I always believe it should still be up to the referee. If he sees a situation like that, then blow his whistle. We could always drop the ball where it, where it was blowing and get on with the game. Reyes cross, Henri. And Keane has to clear. Gilberto tries to strike, and it's Edgar Davids who gets it away. Now, Perez will be in trouble here. This tent is starting to boil over a little bit. That is a simple solution if Tottenham think they've done the wrong thing. Let Arsenal score. <laughs> Do you think that'll happen? Well, remember Arsenal, Sheffield United here, and Arsenal's solution, of course, was to uh, have a replay. Do you think there'll be a replay? No. I remember one of the lower leagues that happened, didn't it? And the other team stood away from the kickoff and let the other team walk up the park and score. That's right, Yeovil, I think, in a Is it Yeovil? cup competition. Yeah. I, I somehow don't think you might see that happen today. Well, he's coming in there. It's just wax at him. Perez is showing a yellow card. Arsenal are still seething at the goal that they conceded, and Davids is the man that they hold responsible. Well, this was a reaction. No surprise to see Lehman out there. That's what I mean about... Players can abuse that as well, you know, though, Rob. If they see their team in trouble, a lot of them have been there, will stay down in the hope that the ball's played out. So it's where you draw the line, really. 
And it wasn't as if a Tottenham player was responsible for the injury or the so-called injury. It was Gilberto clashing with a buoy. Well, the only way for Arsenal to put it right now is to make their own luck at this end. It's Thierry Henry. Looking to wriggle away from Lee. He's pulled it back for Reyes! Good save by Robinson! The boy goes in for the follow-up. That was a good save. It, it was a good save. He's been poor, I think, Reyes today. He's contributed very, very little. But he gets this opportunity. It's beautifully controlled. He just side-foots it. He doesn't thrash at it. But he just uses his setting foot, just prods it goalwards. I think it makes it different. He's gone the wrong way, Robinson. He's moving to his right. Has to plunge back to his left. Good goalkeeper. Well, it really is within their reach now, isn't it, for Spurs? That's a big opportunity for Van Persie. Might be the one that Arsenal are counting the cost of now. Just before this man, Henri, came on. Oh, brilliant ball through to a boue! And driven across by Reyes and pinball for a moment. Well, Stolteri and Tanyo somehow combine it to get this back to the goalkeeper. Grabui again is the one who threatens. I've no idea where this is. When your luck's in, that happens. up against Emmanuel Adebayor. Looks as though he's about to get a losing first taste of a derby. It's not something that Arsenal fans have become accustomed to. Well, it's not been too many, only 17 in the whole match. Arsenal only asked the question of the goalkeeper twice. And that is unusual. They play at home. Adebayor has won his battle with Stelteri. Henri! Spurs hold their heads in disbelief. Typically majestic. Thierry Henri gets Arsenal back on course. Well, they're furious now, Tottenham fun, because they feel Stelteri was fouled. Look how much this goal means. As the ball's played here, it comes wide. And Stal Terry thinks he's won this. And he thinks he's pulled back by Adi Bayer, but the referee gives nothing. But watch this for quick feet. One touch and hit, and it's surprised because he takes it so, so early. Thierry Henry. It's just a trademark on me goal. It's left side of goal, and inevitably it goes across the goalkeeper into the far corner. And Arsenal are level. That's why they kept him in reserve, just in case. And the decision to send him on has been fully vindicated. And it's as you were in the battle for fourth. Fabregas looks for Adebayor once again. Flamini. Fabregas, Perez, and this is Juru. Reyes, Gilberto, David's being jeered for his part in the. Oh, he's off now. He's going to send them off. He's been booked. This is close to blowing up in Tottenham's face. It's a nothing tackle. He wants a free kick here, and he maybe should have had one. But when he didn't get it, the ball gets away from him and he comes in. And you can't do that. If you've got a yellow card already, you really are asking for trouble when you're as reckless as that. Well, you can feel the tension, can't you? Pressure cooker stuff for Arsene Wenger, but... How must Martin Yol feel now? Adebayo. Mm. 
Murphy. Henri. Away by Gordon. There's Toure. Flamini. Perez. Fabregas. There's Toure. Hugely ambitious. <laughs> Do you think he wants to win? Stretch it, stretch it, he's saying, widen it. So he's talking about, they get a little narrow at times. I think Arsenal know that. And particularly when a team's defending like Tottenham are doing now, they've pretty much accepted that one one's as good as it's going to get for Tottenham. Ten men. He'll be just as anxious to see the time board now as Arsene Wenger. And it's three minutes, is it? Three minutes, it is. Here's Flamini. Away by Stolteri. Now Reyes. Perez. Up by Defoe. Here's Reyes. A goal conceded now, and Tottenham's season really could effectively go up in smoke. This period of stoppage time so crucial to them. Gardner's header clear. Fabregas as the pressure builds again. And by all going for the spectacular. Yeah. Free kick given. Spurs more than it does Arsenal, but they are back to worrying about that extra game that the Gunners have in the run in. Well, I think they'd have taken this Spurs 1 1, a draw, and Arsenal don't close the gap, still very much in their own hands if it remains like this. Flamini. Gilberto's header across, Adebayo will go into challenge, Pires was in there too, and he very often scores against Tottenham. Now we've got an expensive ball boy on the sidelines there. It's Fabregas whipping it across towards Adebayo, just beyond his reach. Yeah, just a little heavy, just a little. One minute left, and Robinson's clearance will not help Spurs' course. It's going to come straight back at them. Might be just one final chance for Arsenal to snatch the winner. Cleared by Stalteri. Keane needs to try and buy a bit of time. Reyes nicks it back, though. Back in by Flamini. Cleared by Keane. This is just about the last attack we're going to see in this match. Goalkeepers gambled. Good punch. Good punch. I needed Robinson to be strong, and he was. It's only a matter of seconds remaining now, and it is all over. And it's as you were in the fight for fourth, with Spurs maintaining their four-point advantage, but no handshake between the managers at the end, and that may be down to the manner of the two goals scored, in particular the first one, where Arsenal felt there was a lack of sportsmanship shown by Tottenham. The goal was scored by Robbie Keane after Arsenal had had two players go down, but David refused to play the ball out, instead carried on, found Keane, who got the opening goal for Martin Yol's team. But the substitutions made all the difference. Thierry Henry scored after it appeared out of all, may have fouled Paul Stalteri. And there was further controversy to come when Spurs ended the game with ten men as Edgar Davids was sent off for a second bookable offence. So a lively old affair in the last North London derby to be played at Highbury.
but still all hinges on the remaining games. Two for Tottenham, three for Arsenal. This game is finished, Arsenal one, Spurs one. Thierry, Michael, before you start the interview, you're still arguing about what happened for Spurs' goal. What's your viewpoint, Thierry? I saw him, I saw him. I saw him <laughs> on the floor, he played. But, you know, I don't know the day, that's, uh, that's how it is. Apparently, said to me also, when we score, I did, I did a foul. But, you know, that's, that's why you know, I didn't want to run like that when I scored, but it just, you know, we got upset because they should have scored, and Michael should have scored a goal in the first half for an amazing run. He didn't, but to concede a goal like that, you know. But of all, uh, I think in the first half they deserve something. Maybe that was uh, the thing who made it happen. But I think we, we just came back into it and uh, did what we had to do. I just think at the end maybe we could have done something more, but uh, I think they played well today. So if you want to discuss about that, we can discuss about it all day long. But my point is we got upset about it, and I think even Michael can understand why we got upset. Michael, should you have stopped? And crucially, did the Arsenal players stop, in your opinion? Yes. <laughs> so he says, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I, I thought he had just fell over. I didn't realise the guy was injured. And, um, you know, we don't like scoring goals like that. But, um, you know, it's happened and we can't change it. But, um, you know, we're not cheats, that's for sure. But I just thought the guy was, had fell down. If he was injured, I would have put it out. But, you know, that's, that's the way it goes, I suppose. It finished all square. Is that advantage Tottenham for fourth place? Still, still um, games to play, points to play for. We've put ourselves in a good position, you know. We played well first half, second half, you know, put us under a lot of pressure and um, probably satisfied with the draw in the end. Thierry, be a sportsman. Can I ask you to present the Barclays man of the match? Can I bring you a glass? Because of the goal, I can't give him the whole bottle. I have to share it now. Well right. done. Well played. You've been, uh, well played. been great today. Martin, a lot of controversy about Spurs' goal. What's your opinion? To be fair, I didn't even see it. I was uh, watching at Kadavic and. Uh, a lad was going down and standing up, so uh, for me there was no problem. But uh, Wenger was pretty upset about it, so but I, I didn't even see it. How disappointed are you they didn't shake hands at the end? No, I was going to the referee and, and shook hands with him. So, uh, but uh, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. You know, maybe sometimes it's difficult for managers. But for me, I think uh, we deserved something out of this game because the first half, you know, we played here at Highbury. I think we had three or four chances. So. Everybody, even an Arsenal fan, uh, would agree with me that we deserve something out of this game. Arsenal, a great fight back from Arsenal, but what did you make of Spurs' goal? It was, a, I think, a, it is a shame, personally. You came off the field muttering disgrace. Is that how strongly you feel? Well, there was an hesitation uh, from Carrick. We saw two players down to kick the ball out, and then uh, they even say, uh, if they did not see that from the bench, you know, they even lie about that. I find that very disappointing. When you look back, do you have any regrets about your team selection or was it a gamble that paid off? No, you know, uh, we play every three days at the moment and uh, we played eight games on the trot. I know since the start of uh, this period that we will suffer at some stage physically and you could see uh, today in the first half. I knew as well that we would be stronger uh, uh, than Spurs physically in the second half and no matter what the team w who, what team will play, we'll t be on top of them. But. Uh, they played well in the first half and we were not in the game like it can happen sometimes when you play every three days. And uh, Overall, uh, we have shown great character and great spirit to come back into it and uh, that's the most positive. With just two games left, is fourth place yours to throw away now? No, I was in the dressing room and they were not even celebrating to be in Europe, you know, so that is a good sign. And hopefully we can uh, win the, the next two matches and then uh, we will be fourth. So 1-1 one, one the score in the North London derby at Highbury. Next, over on Sky Sports 1, Warren Barton will be in the studio to cast his eye over the day's talking points. To join us, press the Sky button on your remote control after the break. Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais. <laughs> me and The Simpsons. Starring me. Written by me, it's, it's about me. Join Ricky Gervais for an evening of The Simpsons, including his brand new episode, tomorrow from 5 on Sky One.
taste that hits a little deeper. Be a high rate saver. Just invest a little money and you know it's gonna go real far. Be yourself a favor. So deposit every month and take advantage of our AER. It's much better than your savings jar. Save monthly for a year and get 7% with a Halifax regular saver. In the future, everyone will protect their eyes from sun damage just like they protect their skin. Clear indoors, Transitions lenses automatically adjust to changing light outdoors and block harmful UV rays and glare. So don't wait until tomorrow. The danger is here today, and so is the protection. Ask your optician about Transitions lenses. Transitions, healthier sight in every light. I didn't feel a thing. Hey, did you feel anything? No. Hmm. Excuse me, did you feel anything? No. It glides so smoothly you'll hardly notice it. Wilkinson Sword Quattro Titanium with four titanium coated blades for an incredibly smooth shave and fantastic feeling skin. Quattro Titanium, new from Wilkinson Sword. Wish you had the number of a local taxi firm? Call the 118-118 team. Why spend half your time half-heartedly trailing around looking at sofas with your other half when you could go straight to DFS right now and get half price? Designer fabric sofas, half price. Cool leather sofas, half price. And luxury contemporary chic for half the price. Four years free credit with the first year free. DFS, you just might find the sofa you're looking for in half the time, but more importantly, everything in the Verve collection is half the price. Think sofas, think DFS. And now, new from miracle Grow, Compact Compost. It expands when you add water and it grows plants twice as big. They call it the city that never sleeps. Yeah, right. The last flight to Heathrow. We've flown more New Yorkers than any other airline. And if we can keep them happy. This week in C-List magazine, the stars revealed their real favourite colours. Strongbow. Taste that hits a little deeper. We can help you to see the right person for the job. Call 0800 600 500. Booper. Feel better. It's cat versus mouse. England versus Germany. Oh, there's German's ticket, damn it! Morris versus... Morris, it's all out war on Vroom Vroom, Tuesday at 8 on Sky One. It's all out war on Vroom Vroom, Tuesday at 8 on Sky One. Matt Taylor. The most crucial of goals at the most crucial of moments. Portsmouth lead 2-1. That late penalty against Sunderland has edged Portsmouth ahead in the race to stay up. And that's because Birmingham could only manage a draw at Everton. They go back into the bottom three. And West Brom looked doomed after losing heavily at Newcastle. Shola Amiobi got two. It's advantage Tottenham in the race for fourth after a draw at Arsenal, but Robbie Keane's goal sparked a war of words on the touchline. And Kevin Davis got two in Bolton's emphatic win over Charlton at the Reebok. Let's have a look at the results in full then. One all at Highbury. Keane put Spurs ahead. 
The equaliser from substitute Henri. Edgar David sent off late for Spurs. Bolton beat Charlton 4-1. Vaz Tabor, Getty and two for Davis. Darren Bent with a penalty for Charlton. 0-0 at Goodison. 3-0 at St James's. Solano with the first before Amiobi's double. And Portsmouth beat Sunderland 2-1. Sunderland went ahead through Tommy Miller. Todorov equalised. Taylor with the late winner from the spot. So this is how the Barclays Premiership table looks with just two weeks to go. Sunderland already relegated, of course, and West Brom and Birmingham will join them next Saturday if results go against them. Portsmouth Faith is now in their own hands. They go two points clear of the drop zone. The only other teams in the bottom half who played on Saturday are unmoved. Everton stay 12th, Charlton 11th. Wigan drop to 9th as Bolton go 8th. Newcastle stay in 7th but are now level on points with 6th place Blackburn. But Rovers have a game in hand in that race for a UEFA Cup place. Arsenal stay 5th, still 4 points behind Tottenham in 4th. None of the top 3 in action. FA Cup finalists Liverpool are 3rd. Chelsea may be out of the Cup but could win the title against 2nd place Manchester United live on Sky Sports next Saturday. Warren Barton's joining me in the studio. I think we have to start, Warren, with the North London derby. Honours even, but the fact that Tottenham are still four points ahead of Arsenal when they finished last season 31 points behind their rivals, does, what does that tell us about the two teams this year? I think, one, we're under Martin Yole, Tottenham have improved immense this season. The, the confidence was there, and I think this performance today, they come of age as well. It's a big game, and their big players come of age. But also, Arsenal's away form has been... Uh, dismal to say the least and that what's concerning me as a as an Arsenal fan they're going into games against Sunderland and Man City trying to win and you know they've they've lost nine games away from home but this was a, a, a fantastic game a London derby full of passion and controversy and uh, a really fitting into a, a, a great time at Highbury. So Robbie Keane put Tottenham ahead what was wrong with this goal? In my opinion, Claire, as a, as a player, as a, an ex-player, nothing, to be honest with you. Two players have collided from the same team. They've gone down. The referee has a good look. Play on. And to be fair to, to Tottenham, they play to the whistle. Arsenal don't. You're told as a player, carry on until you hear anything different. Again, it epitomises Robbie Keane. He's been outstanding this season. He's led by example. And he come of age today, again. And also Michael Carrick, who was involved. Yes, they have a look. And then you think maybe maybe he should have stopped, but it's a London derby. You're, you're playing for, for states of the Champions League, but Robbie Keane gets on the end of this. It's a great little finish and to celebrate in front of his fans. And uh, here we have two two managers, normally calm, but look like two stags there going at each other. And uh, they're, they're, telling the passion, yeah, going on there. they're telling me the passion has, has come out of the game. But well, let's hear what the principal characters had to say about that goal. To be fair, I didn't even see it. I was uh, watching at Kadavic and... Uh, a lad was going down and standing up, so uh, for me there was no problem. But uh, Wenger was pretty upset about it, so but I, I didn't even see it. It was a, I think a, it is a shame, personally. You came off the field muttering disgrace. Is that how strongly you feel? Well, there was an hesitation uh, from Carrick. We saw two players down to kick the ball out, and then uh, they even say, uh, if they did not see that from the bench, you know, they even lie about that. I find that very disappointing. Michael, should you have stopped? And crucially, did the Arsenal players stop, in your opinion? Yes. <laughs> so he says. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I, I thought I just fell over. I didn't realise the guy was injured, and um, you know, we don't like scoring goals like that. But um, you know, it's happened, and I can't change it. But. Uh, you know, we're not cheats, that's for sure, but I just thought the guy was, had fell down. If he was injured, I would have put it out, but, you know, that's, that's the way it goes, I suppose. If uh, the player was injured and you had the ball in that situation, would you have put it if out? If it's a head injury, then I would have done it if out. If it's a head injury, the referee was Yeah, exactly, again. and the referee was in a great position. He's, he's had a look. The players are starting to get on their feet. Tottenham are going for the champion, you know, trying to get into the Champions League, so that's take nothing away from them. Michael's absolutely right. They're not cheats. They play to the whistle. Arsenal, uh, to their defence, are, are expecting the ball to go out. But you've just got to play to the whistle at the end of the day. Martin Yol said he didn't actually see the incident. Arsene Wenger, very upset about that, said he felt that the Tottenham bench were lying. Now, what he's upset about is that he clearly heard, and we do have an angle that's not been seen before, Martin Yol urging his team to play, play, play. So you heard Martin Yol urging the, 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 the players to play on there. That's what's upset Arsene Wenger. That's why he's felt Martin Yol has lied but when, about but it. But when he said play, play, 
Michael Carrick's not had a look round. He's got the ball. In my opinion, uh, Martin Yo is saying to Michael Carrick, do it quickly, play. We've got an advantage being that Edgar Davis is in a, an advanced position. You can see here, he goes across, he's got the ball. Edgar Davis makes a good angle for him. Now he's looking to play. You can hear the comments there. He's saying play early. He's not saying play on because the player's injured. They play to the whistle, the ball gets played in, it's 1-0 to Tottenham. And for my opinion, that's a legitimate goal because you've got to be professional. Yes, if a sportsmanship does come into it, but any of the game, you know, they're, they're not injured. It wasn't a head injury. You play to the whistle. Big surprise for a lot of people. Thierry Henry did not start the game. He did come on from the bench and naturally he scored. But was there a foul in the build-up to this? Well, I think so as well. And in football, things work out for you. You know, Arsenal would have been disappointed with the uh, decision earlier on. But I think so. Thierry gets clipped around the, the hills here and he goes down. But take nothing away. This is Thierry Henry. He's sheer class. We're talking about a legend of Alan Shearer. He's a living legend. He's a fantastic player. Should still Terry not have been stronger in this situation? No, he's, he's got clipped from behind. He, he's trying to run the ball out there. Yeah, you can maybe say, but he's got muscled out of it. But if it's a foul, it's a foul, you know, at the end of the day. Great first touch, and he stabs at the ball. He doesn't swipe at the ball. He doesn't have to smash the ball. He knows where to go. He's, look at his first touch, and then he just pokes it with the outside of the look at foot. this for a celebration. I, I think the only one celebrating more than me uh, uh, was him, was me today. And that was a, a goal that he... Uh, you know, you, you, you think to yourself that he enjoyed that goal and maybe there was a little bit of frustration being that he was put on the substitute bench. But I think that's, that's good management. He's let Van Persie play, keeping them obviously for the, the big Champions League game because that's the one they want. Now, it could have been better for Tottenham. They had some chances in the first half. Could have like, been out of sight at half-time. Yeah, again, and everything down the right-hand side for me was positive today with Lennon. Defoe here hits the target. You know, Jens Lehmann made a fantastic save. But this, this is the man for me that really made it this afternoon. Maybe an outside chance to get in the squad. Aaron Lennon. Aaron Lennon does very well. Very weak shot there by Defoe. But this is what Michael Carrick's come of age. I was saying about Robbie Keane. Michael Carrick's brought this to his game. Now, I'd love to see him do more of this. He's got great awareness, very great Ricky balance. Very Ricky esque Yes, I thought you remember that from the cut final. All that was missing there was a finish. But um, as I said, there's a player now that's come of age and really stamping his authority in the Premiership. We know he's a, a good player, but now he's gone on to that stage of an international level and it'd be great to see him in the World Cup squad. But don't rule out Lennon as well for the squad. This is how the table stands. Tottenham still four points ahead. Arsenal with that game in hand. Let's have a look at the fixtures. Warren, who's your money on? Well, I'm, I'm looking now and I'm just, the thing that worries me, as I said, was the Arsenal away games. They haven't been able to do, get too many victories away from home. I just look at uh, Tottenham at home to Bolton and a, another London derby. I can see them getting the, the points that they need to to finish up into a full spot because Arsenal away from home, the, the record hasn't been great. And three tough games in a week for them. Exactly, yeah, that's the thing. But, I mean, they've been playing the three games in a week since February, so it's not too much of a problem.